let's talk about what's happening in Flint, Michigan, and what happened to get things to this point. There's lead, rust, and other junk in the water coming out of the taps in people's homes. The water is unsafe to, to drink or cook with, it's been unsafe to bathe in, and it is discolored enough that people can't even use it to wash clothes. There's a complete loss of trust in public officials and agencies in Michigan, who told the citizens of Flint that the water was safe to drink for many months before reversing this message and telling people not to drink the water. Many people in Flint, particularly children, have elevated levels of lead in their blood and in their body. Lead has immediate or short-term effects on development and learning, as well as long-term or chronic impacts associated with exposure. So how did we get to where we are now? It's a complicated story, but we'll take a quick look at some key things that happened along the way. Flint used to have a lot of automotive factories, especially for the company General Motors. Most of these factories have closed since the 1980s, and the population of Flint has fallen from about 200,000 people at its peak to less than 100,000 recently, under half what it once was. With far fewer jobs, a much smaller population, and 40% of the population living in poverty, the city of Flint has had budget problems in recent years. Additionally, a majority of Flint's population is African American. The state of Michigan has a law that allows the governor to appoint an emergency manager to manage the budget of cities or organizations having serious budget problems, and an emergency manager was appointed to oversee the city of Flint in December 2011. The emergency manager's job is to get finances in order, meaning they are focused on money. One apparent opportunity to save money was to switch Flint's water supply from coming from Detroit's water system, which took water out of the Great Lakes, to a new regional water authority also taking water from the Great Lakes, Lake Huron. This switch was expected to save something like $5 million per year for the city of Flint. However, the new water system was still being built, so Flint switched its water supply to the Flint River until the new system was going to be ready. Well, it turns out the Flint River's water is corrosive or acidic enough to be a problem. Flint's water treatment plant did not use an anti-corrosive additive that could have reduced the problems caused by the water, with some media coverage of the current situation saying this was a cost-saving decision because the anti-corrosive additive would have cost $100 per day. One challenge of getting domestic water from a river rather than a large body of water like one of the Great Lakes is that the water quality of a river can more easily be affected by weather and other events than, say, a Great Lake, so treating river water for drinking and home use is more challenging. In addition to being affected by weather, factors possibly contributing to the corrosiveness of the water in the Flint River include runoff from farm and possibly even runoff from salt used on roads to, to melt snow and ice. Think about how road salt could cause rust and corrosion on metal parts of cars. With corrosive water flowing through the city of Flint's water system, the insides of some of the city's aging pipes began to corrode, and residents started noticing rusty, discolored water coming out of their taps. What was shown later was that while the water corroded the insides of these pipes, the water was also corroding lead solder from the pipe connections and the insides of some lead feeder pipes which connected water mains to older homes. This lead dissolved in the water that was being used for drinking, cooking, and bathing. As residents began raising the issue of the quality of the water coming out of their taps, a variety of local Flint and State of Michigan officials denied there were any problems and insisted the water was safe for drinking and other uses. Water tested at the treatment plant showed no signs of lead or discoloration because most of the problems were happening after the water left the treatment plant and flowed through the Flint water system's aging pipes. This went on for months before a water quality scientist from Virginia Tech University responded to Flint residents and performed some water, water quality tests at homes, and a Flint pediatrician showed significant increases in levels of blood lead contamination in a large number of children in Flint. Some of the water tests in homes showed lead contamination high enough to be classified as toxic waste. Lead poisoning is irreversible and can have significant effects on people of all ages, but is especially harmful to children. There will be short-term and long-term health care costs for the Flint residents who have experienced this lead poisoning. There will also be long-term education impacts since lead has been shown to lower IQ and impacts on long-term job prospects and economic productivity for those who have been poisoned and for the city of Flint in general. 
Once government officials acknowledged the scale of the problem, they told people not to use the water and began bringing in water for residents to use. The water system also switched back to a supply from the Great Lakes through the Detroit water system, but the damage to the water distribution system remains and the water is still not as clean as it, and clear as it was before this all began. The cost of bringing bottled water in is significant, not to mention the amount of time residents have to spend on a regular basis picking up water for use at home for drinking, cooking, and bathing and washing clothes, among other things. Think of how many bottles of water would be needed to take a bath or wash clothes. What if someone doesn't have a car they can use to pick up water, or they're elderly or disabled? Water is heavy and not easy to carry. The Michigan National Guard was brought in to distribute water door to door, which was very important, but it took these National Guard members away from their jobs, which has some productivity effects. Also, what about the energy needed to bring the water in, and what's happening with all the used bottles of water? There's a lot of plastic waste adding up somewhere. These factors are a lot less important than making sure people have clean, safe water to drink, but it is a factor that should be considered for the long term. The City of Flint and the State of Michigan are now working on plans to fix the water infrastructure in Flint. This may include digging up and replacing a lot of pipes, if not all pipes. And whatever is done will cost much, much more than the money they were trying to save, which started this whole problem. Among many other things, the Flint water crisis demonstrates how individual decisions often have ripple effects once they have been made. If we categorize the factors involved in the Flint water crisis as parts of either economic, social, or environmental systems, we can see how these systems interacted and affected one another. In the case of Flint's water crisis, a decision to save money due to economic and social effects did not carefully enough consider the potential impacts of environmental factors, which has significantly impacted social, economic, and environmental systems.